Hey everyone, welcome to podcast number five for Syncretist Society. Uh, we're having a great day here in Asheville, North Carolina, and we are going to talk about the theme of sacrifice today, uh, which goes into a lot of different aspects in the field of being human, right? So this is going to talk about addressing our needs to religion, uh, to food and animals and uh, money and resources, yeah. right? So it's all the same uh, aspect in the realm. And recently I put up a post, which I don't normally like to put up posts about what I'm doing. I tend to just let people come to me and ask because I'm a generator, but I put up a post recently just announcing the syncretist initiation and, and just some more information on it. And it was interesting because there was someone who commented on my post and they said, are you looking to make a profit from this? And it kind of prompted me to have this podcast today to understand more about when we should sacrifice, what sacrifice means, mm -hmm. and all about energy exchange and balance and making bargains and agreements and how the realm, how being a human operates in the physical plane. And also we're going to probably dive into a little bit of the cosmology or the evolution of where we're heading as a, a collective consciousness and all of that in terms of sacrifice. Uh, so we have been in this theme of sacrifice for a long time, right? We are expected a lot of times to sacrifice ourselves or... Uh, you know, we've, we've got all these religions, we have all of these laws on the planet and, and governments mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, be a nice person. Just do something for free all the time, okay? That's kind of the, the theme of, of a lot of things, which we do like to do that because sacrifice on one part of the spectrum is service, right. okay? So that's also on the spectrum. Uh, we can think of this whole spectrum as needs and resources and really synthesis and seeing how everything is connected that's all part of this spectrum and there's different areas mm -hmm. on it uh in terms of the alchemical processes or the angles of information so needs resources animals yeah. food money all of that is on this spectrum so especially when it comes to how we navigate working together with others Okay, whether it be a friend, a family member, a uh, relationship, right? Somebody we don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's about part of it is getting our needs met, which has a lot to do with resources. Okay, so resources are not just money, it's not just food, it's even goes into sexual themes mm -hmm. and, and a lot of other aspects as well, which is part of the genetic code. We're, we're talking about the 19th gate here. Uh, that is in the human genome for the pressure to even find God. So this even goes into religion and all of that. So anyways, this guy commented on my post, hey, are you expecting or, or trying to make a profit from this? And I reached out to him and I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you. What prompted you to to comment? And I, I just want to understand what you're what you're saying. And basically, he was like, oh, well, you shouldn't make any money off of, you know, work for finding truth and understanding mm -hmm. and, and things like this. Now, many years ago, I started doing plant medicine, right? Ayahuasca and, and other ceremonial plants that expand your consciousness and help you to tap into not only healing yourself, but discovering new things about the way you view the world. Mm -hmm. And one of the first times I went there, I even thought the same thing. I was like, wait, why are they charging for this, mm -hmm. right? Why do they, why are they trying to make money off of healing? And, uh, you know, I, I spoke with the people and, and they explained it to me that energy, right? And the opening of the pathways to correctness and, and exchange, whether it be information, and then you, you give an exchange of something as well. Um, whether it's healing or, or art, you know, if you're making art, right, there can still be an exchange for that as well. Uh, but it basically opens up the channels or the pathways for the exchange to be received correctly. Okay, so we also know in psychology that, 
it's pretty basic. If you don't put any effort or uh, if you don't sacrifice something monetarily or Mm time-wise or whatever, you just get something for free, it's not always, uh, you know, received in the right way. So, yes, there is a time and place to be selfless, and that actually comes from a different mechanism in in our genome, okay, different code, and that is important as well, but, um, you know, when it comes to resources and needs and our work and things like that, uh, you know, it's important to have equal exchange or some sort of agreement. Um, The shadow side of needs and... Um, you know, the pressure to find resources, if we initiate giving, if we initiate doing certain things, the shadow that comes out from this is sensitivity, Mm. right? And codependency, right? And sensitivity in the terms of being like oversensitive, right? And building resentment. Now, both Alex and I have this 19th code. Mm -hmm. I have the 19.2 which is called service. So I project out of my energy. Yes, I'll be of service to you. And I love it. I love nurturing. I love entertaining. I am very sensitive most of the time to what I believe people might need, even Mm -hmm. before they might not, before they know, right? And then Alex has the 19.5, which is called the savior or sacrifice, um, you know, which is this heightened level of, almost like being the sacrificial lamb, being the savior complex, right? Which is not always easy for either one to to deal with, but it is a great, huge gift. Um, so Alex, we've talked about it even with your own codes, how it's important not to initiate, because you're a projector right. also. <laughs> right. Yeah, I will, I'm getting better at it now, but volunteer time and energy when it wasn't invited even just if someone's talking about something and this could be in all aspects i'm interested in either information or manual labor for uh, gardening things or time and energy it it all usually comes back to energy and i will know just because i'm extremely sensitive to energy so if i've even barely overextended myself i will feel that and if i wasn't invited to do that there's kind of a there's no closed loop so right. then the bitterness and resentment will start to build pretty quickly mm-hmm. so it's yeah i have absolutely no problem giving any of my information and time when i know someone will appreciate it right and that i think that's the hardest thing that i had to learn was if they don't ask they won't appreciate and right. that's just in general which is why you should charge for things that are that you're good at that it people do not find value or appreciate things given for nothing right because there's it might it, it's not reciprocal by nature there's no closed loop there's no end to it there's kind of a feeling of just left hanging right and then if they're not aware of that then you'll be left bitter and will be less likely to help them maybe whenever they actually invite it completely not their fault that was all me whenever i did that it's it's that one's been rough yeah yeah Yeah. i even remember a while back when because i have that 19.2 also which i do love to give i love to like share Mm -hmm. and nurture and all those things and uh prior to having a full understanding of that mechanism of myself I would just give and, and not expect anything in return. But I guess there was a subconscious uh, expectation that mm-hmm. like, okay, well, they'll like consider me yeah. or those kind of things. And so I would have this pattern of building resentment yeah. where I would be like, wait, I feel like I'm not being as considered or like these types of things. And uh, which stems to like childhood and and. All of our codes have the inverse, right? So we have a mechanism to give and to nurture and be of service, but it can also be in this inverted way where that turns into something we become bitter about or resentful if it's not entered into correctly, right? So that's why we look at the strategy and authority and all the other mechanisms to understand even how to enter into service, right? Um, and this false paradigm of sacrifice on the plane in general, 
So I was talking a minute ago about all the religions and, you know, there's all these stories about sacrifice, you Mm -hmm. know, Christ on the cross and all of these different religions that, you know, require you to sacrifice your life to another being or or different things, Mm -hmm. right? That uh, even in the past, other cultures would sacrifice humans and, you know, sacrifice parts of their population that they deemed would would be good for that. Uh, And... Evolutionarily speaking, in the era of time that we're in cosmologically with humanity, this is actually going to be cut off from the realm. Like this whole sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. The whole sacrifice program and all of that is going to be cut off from our experience. So I'm really interested to see what that's going to look like after 2027. Yeah, that's soon. Yes. Yes. Um, But yeah, especially when it comes to your work, whatever it is, uh, you know, we have these other themes on, you know, in our experience here when it comes to value, right? The whole ego of um, navigating the material plane comes into this as well, material worth, uh, which again, energy, currency, right? Money, this is all ways that we can transfer energy, yep. right, to each other. Um, and it's not just money, but it's it's other things too. So if you are a healer or, uh, you know, you're self-employed or you're, um, you know, doing things that are helping people and you enjoy it and that is something that you can receive an exchange on, mm-hmm. you need to check in with yourself too and be like, okay, am I really asking for what it's worth? Right, what I value it as, uh, or am I not doing that for some sort of false belief system of you know people aren't going to pay that or right. uh, I'm not good enough or whatever? Um, and this, when we go into the syncretist initiation training, and and we do have a module in there about money and mm. currency and things like that. That was a big lesson for me. Yeah. <laughs> I did readings for free for yep. years and uh, that that was a you can't sustain yourself no on that or you can't continue to invest in yourself and to grow in your expertise and your chosen field of mastery without it coming back in some way so right, right in order to just sustain yourself there has to be an exchange of something mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't always have to be currency like you said it's something of something that you value so right. another service someone provides or food or someone else's time just anything yeah it doesn't always have to be currency but obviously paying bills is necessary yeah. so it's nice <laughs> if it's currency yes yes for yeah. sure so next time you are giving something to someone or you're doing things for them yes we want to do it out of love and all this and that but you know ask yourself like what is the hidden motivation mm. if i haven't made an agreement Right, so a lot of times we do this in relationships. Uh, this aspect or this code also is like reaching over or directed towards the emotional plane. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we give in order to kind of make sure everyone's happy, right? Even though there might be this like underlying thing that like you want to feel safe or you want to feel like people are sensitive to you, but instead of communicating that, maybe you just try to make everybody else happy, yeah. and then you're confused why they're not doing what you wanted them to do. Um, So yeah, it's just really important that we evaluate even our motivations and like why we're really doing things um, so that we can actually do an agreement or or have some sort of conversation with the person so that we understand what we're actually expecting, you know? Otherwise, that's where things kind of break down. This code is the basis of foundations of all relationships anyways, right? right? Uh, whether it be romantic or business or whatever, uh, you know, getting our needs met is part of how everything is connected. That synthesis, the, uh, you know, everything is is interconnected, right? Interdependence and all of that. Um, so getting our needs met is a big aspect of navigating this material plane. And a lot of times if we just make an agreement or bring it out into the open or have a conversation even about what we need, Uh, you know, we can clear a lot of distortion, prevent a lot of uh, emotional chaos or things that don't really work Mm -hmm. um, where you may have sacrificed yourself and then got rejected or 
um, you know, felt disobeyed, right? These are actually the words that we would use for this channel. It even talks about revolutions and war. It's the butcher or the shepherd energy, this, this circuit and the sacrificial lamb or the sacrificed one, right? So all of these themes actually interconnect and we just need to have conversations about what we actually need, what we expect, what's fair, and then come to an agreement. Right. So it's kind of just the basis of if you start looking at interactions, every interaction as a negotiation. Right. So if you try to make win-win situations. Yeah. Because it doesn't work well for, let's say, reality if someone loses. Yeah. It, it just doesn't. Obviously, sports is a different thing because there's still negotiations going on and uh, behind the scenes, everything like that. But just in interpersonal dealings, yeah. everything is a negotiation. And the, the thing that kind of clicked for me was there's a lot of conditioning if you're raised by uh, just working parents. So it's yeah. you have to do something to make it through life, as in you have to work. But work has a very strange definition. Yeah. So my mom is a uh, very uh, physical, manual person. So it was ingrained in me that I had to do something I could show or else uh, there wasn't any real uh, value. value provided. Yeah. And then it took until maybe a decade ago whenever, thankfully, wealth is usually one of the subjects that pops up in um, learning about yourself circles or kind of in the awakening process they always touch on wealth and people are like wait i didn't think this was going to have money in it but it's not just money it's value so as long as you are providing value of some sort and some people will have completely different definitions of value someone right. who um just information is incredibly valuable so there doesn't need to be any physical work as right. i was taught uh helping people or even guiding people, any sort of thing that can have value for someone else's life is worth a exchange. lot. Yeah. Right? So there has to be an exchange or yeah. else the circuit doesn't complete. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and back to what I was saying about how I used to do readings yeah. for free, right? And what you were saying, how like if you do something for free, you're kind of like left hanging and yeah. all of that. Um in a kind of looser term here, if we talk about like karma. I was going to say, bring karma in. <laughs> energetic yeah. exchange and karma, not the way that all the right. spiritual woo-woo illusion distortion is. But it's literally just the balance. Okay, right. the balance. So Re even... Reaction. Means yeah. action. Karma right. means action. Yeah. So there has to be a reaction. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if you do something for free or, or you're just like really slaving away and sacrificing yourself for whatever and you're not getting your needs met or... or uh, valued or appreciation or recognition or respect or whatever it is that would uh, satisfy that exchange, then you are left with a depletion, yeah. you know, and, and it's a depletion of your energy, your sense of worth, your, and it's not just psychological, it's energetic, it's, it's all of that. Uh, so even when I was doing those plant medicines and those ceremonies and after I had that conversation, I really understood how in order even for the, the medicine to work correctly, mm -hmm. you know, there's got to be that part on, on my part, yep. you know, to exchange exactly. that. Um, and so I, I do believe that. Uh, but we are ending this phase of this false paradigm of sacrificing. Uh, and even like you said, how there is a distortion even in the spiritual or religious planes of, oh, you can't make money or money's bad right. or weird distortions around money. Uh, I don't believe that money should ever be the motivation right. for what you're presenting as value, right? Your presentation of your uh, uniqueness, right? Your contribution should be with that motivation of like, your consciousness and being your full self and that satisfaction of being able to translate your consciousness, right? And it's from that love of yourself and what you're doing that people will be attracted to it and they will want to, to share in that. And that's what we can exchange with others. Uh, so there are some videos in the training course about uh, AI and currency and Bitcoin yeah. and you know, different ways that we exchange. Yeah. And the commodities are one of the 
easiest ways to wrap your mind around or help me wrap my mind around value. So things that have no intrinsic value, you can't do anything with crypto, with Bitcoin, with any of those. They don't exist physically. So people have that mental block. They're like, what can you do with it? And that has nothing to do with why they have value. They have value because they are valuable to people. Right. Just that. Same as art. You can't do anything with it, but it provides beauty. It evokes emotion. It doesn't always have to have a use, a tangible use in industry or what one person would have no use for, someone else will just for the emotion it pulls out of them or what it reminds them of the way reality works or just a glimpse of the divine. Any of that holds significant value. It's the same thing with... um, any of the random things people invest in, if it has value as a medium of exchange in some way, it needs nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I'm sure Alex and I will be doing other podcasts on crypto because oh, yeah. Alex is very proficient in, <laughs> in those aspects. We're both into lots of things, stock market. I just like and... decentralizing things. Yes. And it's the, it's the our generational way to decentralize everything that has become centralized in the last 20 years yeah as as the internet allowed dispersal of information uh big powers reconsolidated all of that and crypto is now not all of the blockchains but there are a significant number of blockchains that are at least helping to put that back out to the, the sovereign individual yeah. level to help you take back control of your life yeah yeah the universe balances out yeah <laughs> Yeah, and even in the cosmology, like what you were saying about art and all of Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, if we look on this other lens of like the movement through time with consciousness Mm -hmm. as humans, we are moving towards an era that is more uh, about aesthetics and beauty and harmony, and that's where we're headed, uh, even though we're having to kind of process out all the darkness and sacrifice and all this old paradigm stuff. Um, You know, and it's everywhere. It's in these ancient traditions and there's a lot of uh, fundamentalists and extremists that are trying to hang on to these programs, really, of of these certain religions and even even Native American culture sometimes. There's certain things that are just not going to be able to carry on into the new uh, ocean that we're going to be in. And uh, we are moving towards this sovereignty, uh, you know, self uh, related to consciousness, you know, like just more about our self consciousness. (laughs) A couple podcasts ago, you talked about the sort of getting rid of the type of mentality. Well, that we've been in for about 2000 years, but Sacrifice kind of goes back to the human condition. Jordan Peterson pointed this out in his biblical lectures where give up the present so that the future might not kill you, so to Mm. speak. So it goes back to the Adam and Eve story where sort of becoming conscious is becoming aware of your mortality and that you have a future. Other animals may not have that to the same degree. Right. Because of our consciousness, we're aware that Uh, There will be a tomorrow so that we may sacrifice something, immediate gratification or whatever, uh, so that it'll be around tomorrow. But that paradigm is shifting quickly and we're just going to be more in the present. Yes, exactly. Right. So that's going to end quickly. And that's been encoded into our reality for a millennia. Yeah. So it's even if people aren't consciously applying it. It's in the educational system. It's coded into all of our institutions. So all of that just causes chaos as it starts to crumble. Right. And it will cause more chaos. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. You know, the sacrifice Mm -hmm. and what are your true motivations for giving? And then also this other aspect of the service, right? So service and sacrifice is a lot about needs, right? So yes, we do need to provide service. Um, in order to make these exchanges and start even thinking about that with all your interpersonal relationships, what agreements aren't being spoken about, right? We need to speak them into the field, right? Like, okay, what do we need to talk about so that everyone feels good 
what do you want? What do I want? How can we help each other? And just kind of pop that uh, distortion and, and make things more clear. And this is the correct way to use this code, right? So you have those conversations and uh, explain your needs and what you're willing to provide for that, vice versa. Uh, but we will be going into all these codes in their specifics in the course as well as many other things. Mm, they'll keep coming up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.